What's going on, Clan fam? Back at it again with some more NCAA College Hoops 2K8. Now, I was going to post this one on my other channel, but I decided, you know what? I'm going to keep posting content to this channel, and then hopefully this channel will blow up, and then I will start posting to my other channel at some point. But anyways, I'm going to start a new legacy. Uh, don't worry, I'm going to keep up with my Montana Muska Loaders legacy. This is just something a little different. I want to use an actual team. Uh, the UL Calcutta one I couldn't do anymore because the data got corrupted. I don't know what happened. I don't know if I turned my PlayStation off too soon or too early or what. I'm really not sure. So I hope you guys enjoy this one. Let's go ahead and take a look at all the rules. So uh, we're going to have half length at six. Injuries are going to be on just because that is a part of college basketball. There's no getting around injuries. It happens to the best of any basketball player. So... Injuries are going to be on. Player transfers are also going to be on because players transfer. That's real life. That's that's how it goes. Players leave early. Also on. I mean, Sion Williamson, freshman, goes to the draft. We're going to leave that on. Pop-up help. I do not need any help. Customized conferences I'm going to leave off. The conferences on this game aren't up to date, but for some reason you can't add a team to a conference and that be it. You have to switch teams with another conference. It's just a mess. I'm not going to mess with it. Customize schedule. We're going to leave that on, obviously. Okay, so who's the head coach going to be? The head coach is going to be good old Harry. Johnson. Harry Johnson. He's a uh, making his way up through the college ranks he's 25 years old he's gonna be six foot two not that it really matters what's his face gonna look like uh we're gonna go with We're going to go with this one. Look at that. You're going to tell me that guy's 25 years old. Okay. If he's 25, I'm negative six. Here's the attributes. What I do is I always throw it on charisma just for the mere fact that in the early years, it's the most important thing is to recruit well, and charisma helps out with recruiting. High charisma keeps your players' confidence up and gives your recruiting actions more impact. So we're going to put all of our attributes on that right now. The team I'm going to roll with today for this legacy is gonna be uh, the Citadel. We're gonna rock with the Citadel. 62 overall, 64 offense, 58 defense. Team unity is terrible at a 14. They play in the Southern Conference. So with our assistant coaches, again, I always look at scouting and charisma. Whoever has the highest scouting and charisma grades, that's who I usually pick. So we're going to go with Eduardo Nadoye. What a name. Practically no help at all on the offensive side of the ball. His limited understanding of defense is essentially useless. We hired a winner here, guys. As a teacher, this coach has a lot to learn about college basketball. Cool. Not good, but not a horrible recruiter. That's what I like to hear. Just trying to get guys on this team that know how to play. Average ability to recognize talent, hit or miss when scouting opponents. Doesn't command respect in the locker room. Has a hard time keeping players in line. Content with where he is as a coach. That's perfect. He's not going to try and take my job. Warren Haywood, practically no help at all on the offensive side of the ball. Contributes a small positive impact to defensive play and development. Okay, that's good. As a teacher, this coach has a lot to learn about college basketball. Just like the last guy. Not good, but not a horrible recruiter. A below par scout. He doesn't have anything insightful to say. His players have the attention span of fruit flies, has only moderate desire to progress in his career. That's what I like to hear. Here is our schedule. We're just going to leave the schedule as it is right now. No reason to mess with it. I know we're probably not going to win a whole lot of games just because we're a terrible team. We have four scholarships available. Our average attendance is 1,680 people. So 28% of our capacity. That's 
really not good. Right here are my legacy goals. So basically, if you have never played this game before, you have all these goals. If you accomplish one of these goals, you get an attribute point at the end of the, of the season that you can put towards your overall. So I could put it on charisma or scouting or discipline or whatever. So my goal is to complete every single one of these goals by the time this legacy is over. This legacy, I think, lasts for 40 years, I'm pretty sure. I can never remember if it's 40 or 45. I, I, I can never really remember. Here is our roster. Steven Jorgensen, senior. He's a 63 overall. He's our best player. Oh, man, this team's bad. This team's really bad. Cordell Davis, Cortez Rollins, Tazmir Savakis, Jamie Pate, Carl Fellows out of Indianapolis. Vince Krager, Ferdinand, Bruzina, Adam Ramsey. These guys look exactly the same. Look at their faces. They're like twins. PL, he looks the exact same too. Come on, 2K. What are you guys doing? He looks the same. These, these four guys right here all look the exact same. And we have two Ferdinands on our team. Seven foot tall. Okay. So my goal right now is to recruit and get all these crappy players out of here. They can transfer, they can do whatever they want, but they can't be here. So let's go ahead and see if anybody really cares about the Citadel. No, they do not. We have a couple of four stars that are interested, sort of, but I don't think there's any chance that we're gonna get these guys, especially with these big schools recruiting. Sometimes what I do is when I'm at these little schools, I wait until the end of the season see if there are any three and four star guys that aren't really getting a lot of love and then I end up picking them up. Another thing I like to do is I like to go after world players just because again they kind of fly under the radar. See this guy's a three star out of France. No one's recruiting him right now so let's go ahead and send him an email and give him a phone call. Long distance call but that's okay. Add him to our target list. Renardo Hernandez out of Venezuela. Nobody's recruiting him. We're going to add him to our target list, and we're going to email him, phone call him, and request some game tape. So I will be simulating these games. The only time I'm going to actually play the game is if we make the NCAA tournament. Um, this game is notorious for being very, very difficult, and the computer is very cheap. But I feel like if you get to the NCAA tournament, that's a game you, you have to play. Um, I probably won't win them the first few years when I'm with the Citadel just because I'm probably not going to get that good of players. But I just don't feel like going through and playing all these games, especially with how bad we are right now. We're a terrible team. There's no point in going through here and playing 30 games and getting blown out 30 of them. So I'm just going to simulate. And if anything happens with recruiting, I will let you guys know. Well, the regular season is over and we went 4-22. Nice. We beat Furman two times, and we beat Davidson, and we beat Elon. 4-22. Yikes. Coach profile, job security, about the size of a pube hair. Conference tournament, we're taking on Georgia Southern. This is probably going to be an L. Wow, we won. We got to play Appalachian State, they're 19-9. And we lost by 20. Okay, so we definitely didn't make the tournament. We wouldn't make... We wouldn't win a local YMCA tournament with this team. So hopefully we can get these recruits in here. And maybe, just maybe, start to turn this thing around. Go an entire season with no unhappy players. How about that? No unhappy players on this losing squad. Clemson wins your national title somehow. Player of the year. This guy from Tennessee, mid-major player of the year, this guy from New Orleans. Coach of the year from Ohio State, okay. Defense player of the year, Travis Spooner for Mercer. Big man of the year, Kai Friend for Utah. DJ Carton wins at Ohio State, freshman of the year. And then here's your first team, second team, freshman All-American team. Let's see who won our conference. You would see Greensboro, Coach of the Year, Coach Appalachian State, Smacky Tiger, wins Conference Player of the Year, Virgil Surratt, Conference Freshman of the Year, and then here's all your teams, no Citadel players. Okay, Jorgensen has graduated, so 
one less guy I got to worry about on this team. Our job security went up somehow, I guess, from one in that conference tournament game. I got one attribute to spin, and I'm going to spin it on charisma. That's up to an A minus. And let's see, Coach Johnson, you've not been with your current team long enough to get any offers. Well, even if I had been here long enough, I doubt I would have got it. Now we're going to get rid of Haywood, and we're going to sign Holt down here. What's his stuff say? It's basically all the same thing. Driven to improve his coaching skills and secure a gig at a good school. Well, you just signed on with the wrong school, buddy. Okay, so here's recruiting. Let's take a look. UCLA got the number one and number two player. That seems fair. Something, uh, something's going on out there at UCLA. And I'm, I'm not liking it. Targets. These guys, I mean, I don't know if we have enough time to even get these guys. We only have six more weeks until the end of the signing period. If those guys do not sign by the end of that period, then they're gone forever. They're not playing here. They're not playing anywhere. We ended up getting our first recruit in Harry Johnson's history. He's the number 122 overall player. Okay, so we got Boris Parker. There we go. I signed a world recruit. Hernandez is on board. And Hannah Van. Okay, so this class ended up being pretty decent. Let's take a look at our signings. We got three three stars and one two star who's six foot ten. Not too bad. Alright, so we are into the season. We have no scholarships, which I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Our average attendance has went down from 28% to 20%. Not good. Job security is not looking good either. But like I said, hopefully we can turn this situation around and maybe get some wins. So we have Parker, who is a freshman. He's our best player at 60. No, he's not. Vareem at 74. A 74 overall is our best player. Then Fernandez is a 65. So Harry Johnson did some good recruiting. He put in some work. So I don't have any scholarships, so that means I don't have to recruit. So I'm going to go ahead and simulate this season and see how we do. Hopefully we uh, get more than five wins. Who knows, maybe we can win our conference tournament. Hey, we got ten wins. We got ten wins. Holy cow. Coach Harry Johnson is turning this boat around. Yeah, still ten and fifteen, but... 10 and 16. But I will take that. Job security is still barely hanging on. Hopefully they give us one more year. And if they don't, then that's that's not that's not good at all. And we lose our first round matchup to Appalachian State. Jamie Pate and P.L. Clayton are unhappy. You should meet with them to boost their confidence. Nah, they're not my guys. Those are not my players, so I'm not really concerned about if they're happy or not, to be honest. Have a player chosen freshman all-conference. Okay, Illinois wins the national championship with Io DeSumo and Kofi Coburn. Wow. What a great team. Let's take a look at... So Vareem made freshman all conference. You love to see it. You have to, oh, anyone conference freshman of the year? What a badass! Steph Curry, one conference player of the year. Coach Appalachian State once again wins coach of the year. Conference champs are the Chattanooga Box. Jamie Pate and P.L. Clayton left the team. Good riddance. That gives us two scholarships. Ooh, we got three attribute points to use. We're going to throw that on Charisma and Scouting. Boise State. I don't think anybody. Yeah. We didn't get any. We didn't get any offers. That's fine. Um, Lynn Weber. 69%. While it is a nice number, it just isn't enough. We're going to have to cut ties with him. And we're going to. Oh, seven foot out of Columbus, Ohio. We're going to go ahead and visit him at home, email him, phone him, and offer him a scholarship. We need the size, so let's see here. Hopefully, hopefully LRB signs this week. I'll be 
really nervous about that, but if we could somehow get LRB to sign, that would be a huge turnaround for our program. And he signed with someone else. Are you kidding me? Are you actually kidding me? Are you kidding me, man? Oh, that's so frustrating. Now I can't. Uh... Well, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new. And I will see you on another time. Peace. Damn it. You fucker!